Well, it seems that you did a great job. Doug says hi. Tell James I said hi. Ryan says hi as well. Everyone in Austin just gets along famously with you, and we're so thankful that you filled in this weekend. Your yeah, your reel's going viral. Great job. Good job, James. Thanks, James. Uh, tell James I will ship him a number one taco from Buff from yeah, we got Velvet you. Taco. Four of Doug's them. gonna send you a buffalo chicken taco from Velvet Taco in the mail. Thank you for love way, you, James. We appreciate you remembering to mention one of our sponsors. That was huge. Okay, love you too. That was James. <laughs> <laughs> love him. And with that, welcome back to Afterthoughts. Afterthoughts podcast. They never said that we would have 13 episodes, but 13. we did it. <laughs> and uh, the show is officially um, the number one podcast on YouTube. That's wild, which man. Is, is it really? Yeah, Joe, I guys. never never would have thought. I re- Joe Rogan reached out to congratulate us yeah. this morning. Man. And is really proud. What an accomplishment. Yeah. So great job. Yeah, thank you. No, great job to you guys and Jacob and Kayla. Jacob and Kayla. Great job, guys. This is fantastic. A lot of response recently. Um, one funny, first, a funny meme. We were talking about Harry Potter. Yep. Last yes. Time. Tyler Hines, who I think has established himself as the biggest fan of the show. He sent me this. We'll have Jacob put it up. It's a uh, Kylo Ren guy talking to Harry Potter. It says, Darth Vader ruled an entire galaxy. Voldemort couldn't even take over a high school. <laughs> Dude, that picture is great. That's really That's good. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Very funny. Another shout out. Okay. Our guy, Jeff Atkinson. Yes. Come on. That's so good. two yeah. weeks ago, we, we talk sports all the time, and he was like, hey, you need to shout out the James Madison Dukes, which yeah. is his school, his team. They've gone undefeated so far. And I forgot, so I showed up to the office, and he made sure I didn't forget by mailing me oh, a James Madison let's go. hat. Thanks, Jeff. Go Dukes. Go Dukes. Jeff, We're, you're the man. Jeff, we love you. We'll the put this on the set season. today for Jeff. Until they lose a game. Maybe. Well, they, they probably won't. They may not. And now they're, they're supposed to not play in a bowl game because they moved from FCS right. to FBS, but they should be allowed. Let them play. This is a good gift from a great person. Let a it be known person. that the Afterthoughts podcast... Ooh. Is in favor of the Dukes getting into a bowl game. <laughs> yes. Controversial statement, but we are we're on board. We're at the top of the show. That's right. Did you have a shout out? Somebody, one of you guys wanted to shout somebody out. Uh, I'd like to shout out Randy Fonz. Oh, oh yes. that's for sure. Tell this story. <laughs> yeah. um, Randy Fonz, one of the best guys ever. One of the best. Well, we talked I, about the. I'd say he's one of the best guys ever. We talk about the AC Project mm-hmm. trip, year long journey of doing mission work. Right behind me. It was the three of us and then our friend Matt Fonz. Who makes it in every sermon. Somehow. Pretty much. As our friend who's a, a counselor therapist who lives in Hawaii. Matt. Randy is uh, Matt's dad. Yep. And Matt, Randy, son of Randy. Yes. Randy is, uh, I mean. Is it Randall for long? <laughs> I do think so, yeah. Okay. So better than Matt. Matthew for long. Yes. Yeah. Um, Randy, father of Matthew. Randall, father of Matthew, Thank you. was on a jog <laughs> or a yog jog. a couple weeks ago. It's, jog. it's not a soft J. A couple weeks ago, he was running and listening to the Afterthoughts podcast. Yeah. Five minutes into the Afterthoughts podcast, he had a heart attack. He's fine. He's fine. Okay, so if you see That's me smiling on this, it's just because he texted because me okay. saying, hey, you heard I had a heart attack. Just want you to know I'm fine. Also want you to know I was listening to your podcast <laughs> when I went down five minutes into my run. Don't know what that says about you guys, oh boy. but praying for you. Love you. Oh Keep boy. up the good work. And so Randy, Randy, back at you. Glad you're okay. You're the man. We love you. Thank you for listening. And um, get back out there. Oof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be careful listening to the podcast. Yes. The podcast. The there. This podcast might give you a heart attack. Wow. Yeah. It was a genetic thing. It wasn't the podcast. I, I don't know. It was a controversial I, I episode. Do. I know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Which episode was it? All, uh, episode 11. All of them are controversial. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. now with the James Madison thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, oh, uh, you guys both had birthdays. I think we forgot Happy to shout birthday, that out. Happy birthday, guys. How does it feel to be older than you were when we started the podcast? Dude, I'm so old now. Yeah. Give us, yeah. Give us some wisdom with your old age. Oh, uh, be careful watching the podcast. You might get a heart attack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kayla? Kayla, also older than when we started the podcast. Yes. Older. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> exactly. Right. A fun fact: It goes Jacob's birthday, then Satan's, and then my birthday. Oh, oh. Halloween's right in between your birthdays. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. 
We, but, we're taking Halloween back. Oh, that's right. But yeah. speaking of that, you, you asked us about scary movies last week. I'll tell you yeah. something that really bothers me. Hmm. There's a horror movie coming out called Thanksgiving. Come on. About someone killing people on Thanksgiving. That's awful. Why would we need to do that? I don't understand horror movies. No, not at all. <laughs> I don't and understand to, to go it. like, okay, so what's, October, we're going to talk about horror movies. What's a holiday movies. we haven't And then we should stretch yet. it into November. Let's make a Thanksgiving horror movie. It's like the... the but here's the problem. As long as there is Man. demand for it, there will always be supply for it. So stop yeah. going to those movies. Stop watching it's them. It's really great when you're trying to watch football on a Sunday afternoon with your five-year-old son, yeah. and then yeah. horror movie trailers yeah. come on. I hope you're That's enjoying fun. your turkey now. Yeah. He's in the house. Yeah. It's just, it's also a really lazy premise. All we most scary movies it. are lazy. Ah. Anyway. Don't get me started. Don't I've already get begun. us started. <laughs> Let's just move on to questions, questions with, Kayla with Kayla before I get angry yeah. <laughs> about Thanksgiving horror movies. <laughs> All right. So we have a few questions. Um, we're going to just start off with a would you rather. All right. Would you rather? Yeah. Oof. Do you guys dun. understand how the game works? <laughs> I'll choose the first option. You pick one of them, right? <laughs> the first, right? That Which you would rather do? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they're both great options. Is that how it usually works? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm excited. Yes. Or they could be and bad. And this is real. This, this has to yeah, happen. Yeah, this is actual life. Okay. This is <laughs> everyone plays this that way. If like, oh, I'm so stressed out because I have to choose. Like, <laughs> this is hypothetical. Yeah, this isn't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kayla. Okay, would you rather explore the depths of the ocean? or outer space? Ooh, that's a great question. And I can breathe either yeah. way. Yeah, you can breathe either way. Because the ocean pressure will crush your head. But I'm going also outer space mm -hmm. can crush you. It's very, that, oh yeah. There's also, more yeah. to explore outer <laughs> space. Yeah. Is hazardous as well. I'm actually, oh, yeah. I can do space fine. Physically, I'm good. <laughs> Did some tests, yeah. Very um, good. I'm going ocean. Ju just, I know there's more to explore in space, but like you, you talk about this a lot, when you fly over the ocean, knowing how deep it really is mm -hmm. to swim down that far and be able yeah. to explore and see some of the creatures that are yet undiscovered, wow. I think would be very special. Mm -hmm. Maybe go lobstering. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. buy some crazy lobsters down there. Oh yeah. Probably. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to um, say space. Oh, why? It seems like it's more unlikely in my lifetime that I'd get the chance. Mm. So I'm going to do that. Do I get to choose where in space? Sure. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah. Neptune. Why? No, no doubt. Neptune? Obviously, yeah. Why? No. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Do a little research on Neptune. Oh. I'm just kidding. Can we put I up some stats on Neptune. Would, you don't I know would. anything about Neptune, <laughs> yeah. Kayla. What do you know about Neptune? I'd actually, I'd actually talk to, to us again when you when you've researched <laughs> Neptune a little bit. I think it's actually really cold on Neptune. I'd go to Jupiter because mm -hmm. that was the first planet that I really fell in love with in third grade. Did my project on Jupiter. Yeah. A lot to explore, biggest planet, and a ton of moons, right? Yeah. yeah. No, you're a right. A ton. Thanks, guys. Yep. And I'll plant a CU Buffs flag yeah. on, on Jupiter for Dion. Yeah. Um, I'm going to the moon. I've wanted to go to the moon yeah. my you entire life. It. You should You do think it. so? I think you should do it. Yeah. We'll raise money. Let's. Can we get a GoFundMe going? Yeah. For go send me for Doug to the moon. How send much does that cost? Moon. How much are people paying? To, Man, it's like I $1, mean, you can't go to the moon yet. Fifteen <laughs> hundred. Yeah. yeah. I bet we could. raise I don't it. know if we could raise that. Or, 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 it or it's a hundred thousand miles. <laughs> you can drive. We can, can, if we can <laughs> combine miles, we could do it. Yes. <laughs> By the end of yeah. next year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I get the if I get the next status on United next year. Yeah, you can go to the moon. I can go to the moon, and you get to check a free bag. Yeah. So it's kind of a win win. What yep. would you take to the moon? Golf club. Nice. Play golf on the moon? Yeah, in a Pro yeah. V1. How does that work, gravity wise? Uh, you have to club down two clubs, I think. <laughs> two clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 100 uh, yards, but on the moon, I'm just going to use a sandwich. A is sandwich. Is it windy? A sand Do you know if it's windy on the moon? I don't think I so. I could check it's the not. reports. I forgot wow. to look. <laughs> I guess it's seasonal. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure you could hit a golf ball around the moon. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. It would just keep going. So. Wow. Cool. Yeah. What else do you bring to the moon? Um, probably snacks. Probably PB and J sandwich. <laughs> yeah. And my. Uh, yeah, because you will get hungry. And an eight iron and a Pro V1. Yep. Yeah. That yep. sounds about and right. I'd probably bring a camera. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't like think everybody would believe me. You could take your phone. Or something. They have built in cameras now. No way. Yeah, and then, you could, then you could FaceTime us from Dude, the moon. Dude, we could do an episode could, from okay. the moon. Jupiter, moon, bottom ocean. of the ocean. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to do episode 14. I will be FaceTiming you guys from the moon. Guaranteed this. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Can't wait to see that. Kayla? Yeah, that's great. Good job, that's you great. guys. Good job. <laughs> um, all right. If you had to watch one sport for the rest of your life, Ooh, what would it be? Basketball for me. Mm. I... You, and, love, and you love the way they dribble up and down the court. That's that's well said. Nobody loves a bounce pass like Ryan. Man. <laughs> and specifically college basketball and even more specifically, I would want March Madness to be happening always so on true. repeat. It doesn't seem like that was part of the question. Yeah. Well, I made it my own. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you can just make up a world. <laughs> yeah. She asks you what sport oh, you like. Every, oh, yeah. every month is March. I'll choose golf and it's the Masters every day. <laughs> I see you, you can and, do that. And I'm it's, playing it's it. Sunday of the Masters. <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> and I win every time. Yeah. And but I'm down by, by three going into the, <laughs> to the fourth round. And I defeat Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer, and Jack Nicklaus. Thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah. uh, football, and I'm the quarterback for the Broncos, and I've won the Super Bowl 15 years in a row. Which begs an interesting question. If like you're that. winning, said, I get to celebrate 15 yeah. straight Super Bowls. If you're winning, while the, Masters winning the Masters every, every day. Sunday, and you're winning no, the Super every Bowl day, every day, sorry, every day, and you're winning the Super Bowl every year, at some point, will you stop enjoying winning? No. In other words, no. is part of the joy of winning also losing enough times that it makes the high Mm-mm. all nope. that much more high? No, nope. I'd always enjoy it. <laughs> Can you play All I Do Is Win? Yeah. Thanks. All I do uh, is win, win, win. The problem, I guess, with my answer now that I think about it is if every day is Sunday, you guys are going to have to work every day. Yeah. And come up with a new sermon every day. Every day. You have to preach, but... Already having a hard time <laughs> yeah, doing it every seven. <laughs> so. But you can always give a shout out to me in hopes that I win the Masters that day, which I will. With the question, I asked, would you watch? But you guys turn it into, would you play? Yes. So would you guys be watching and then... Oh, life is playing? what you make it, Kayla. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah. So yeah. football, watch. golf, basketball. basketball. Okay. Yeah, I would choose football, college. You get college and pro. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, College yeah. football. Yeah. Again, pro. Oh, okay. And Canadian football and European <laughs> football. I mean, sure. Do yeah. Soccer technically is football too, so I get the World Cup. Ooh. Ooh. Answer to you. That's a good answer. Yeah. Answer to you. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, next question. What game show would you most want to be a contestant on? Ooh. Who wants to be a millionaire? I grew up just wanting to be on that show so bad, yeah. but then I would always pretend like I was, and I never got past like the second, you're a second kid. or third. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And also not intelligent. <laughs> Those were the two factors. Oh, That's yeah. makes, that makes the show tough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fear factor. Ooh. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. I think I'd be you good would, at, I think you I'd would be good good at, at fear that. factor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you would be good at that. What yeah, would be the thanks, hardest? What, what's like the Achilles heel for you? Is there like a stunt that you wouldn't be able to do? I mean, as far as all the uh, like the adrenaline things, you'd be fine. I'm, I think I'm, I'm good. What I mean, I don't know how good I'd be at it, but I'd be yeah. pumped to do it. Not, yeah, you have to get locked in a basement with spiders. Yeah, probably anything. If there was something with bugs, yeah, uh, you know, if it's like a you get in a tub of snakes for oh. some reason. Oof. Doesn't no. bother me at all. What? But that's, if it's spiders, that's the problem. If wrong, it's spiders, wrong with you. I'll probably start crying. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Snakes never bothered me. Spiders mm, this, make me cry. The snakes never bothered me anyway. You need to read so, the Bible, Doug. Don't tell Joe Rogan that or else he'll make sure that it's uh, yeah. spiders. Spiders. Um, Ron Weasel. Tell him I'm afraid of snakes. So that it's snakes. <laughs> oh, reverse psychology. Yeah. My uh, major in college. Exactly. My wife and I were, we missed it, but we were going to go try out for The Amazing Race. Oh. And I think we would be good at that show. Yeah, you guys would so be good at that. Me and Steph on The Amazing Race. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. My family actually auditioned. We made it to like the semifinals for the family season of that show. Really? When I was a kid, yeah. Oh. And then we didn't make it. Yeah. But. <laughs> Dang. Would have been fun. Is the show still going? I believe so. You guys wow. should do it. Thanks, man. Let's, let's get your hard with my, right now. It's going to be hard with my golf schedule. Yeah. Having the Masters every, every day. day of the Masters. What's up, Amazing yeah. Race? I would like that. What would you say to that? I mean, I used to always want to do The Amazing Race. Yeah. So when you said that, that was actually a good huh. one. Jacob? Um, maybe even... Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can go. <laughs> I just stole the mic from Kayla. Uh, Survivor. Hands nice. Down. Nice. Okay. I've watched Survivor since I was seven. Like That's Every awesome. single season I've seen. So you've seen 40 plus Dude, seasons. So from Richard Survivor. Hatch, the original winner, yeah. all the way to today. Wow. Every single episode. And Would every you season holds Wait, your really? attention. Mm-hmm. Wow. Big Survivor fan. You feel like you'd be uh, like creating alliances and kind yeah, of what's manipulating. What's your? Yeah, dude, I think I'd do all right. Yeah, I think because I'm like a nice guy, but I think I would want to play the game like pretty. Yeah, cut, you could get it. and mm-hmm. no one would see it coming. You know, nice. Yes, yeah. you'd like spread some rumors about some people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See what Ryan? So and so is voting for so and so at tribal what? council. <laughs> yeah, dude, Survivor. Okay, all right, Jacob. Answer. Nice. That's good. 
Um, two more questions. Cool. Who played the best Batman? I think we're all in agreement here. Yeah. Even though his Batman voice was You're right, not Christian my favorite at times. But. Yeah, we just all love the Christopher Nolan. Those are the trilogy. best Batman. Movies. It's kind of like when you ask somebody Whataburger or In and Out. At the end of the day, it's a burger. Right. But if you grew up having In and Out, it's nostalgic. And, and better than Whataburger. And it's better well. than Whataburger. There's yeah, like an emotional attachment yeah. to right, In and Out right. Burger. You know. I think the answer is Pete Terry's though. Anyway. Yeah. There you go. Okay, well, you know what I'm saying about the burger thing. Well, the nostalgia is powerful. I'm going to go Pete Terry's. And I think. <laughs> and and most importantly, <laughs> what do we call it when Batman leaves church? J.K. Rowling. Christian Bale. Ah, oh, Christian close. Bale. Uh, there you go. That was good. Okay. Um, last, last one. Sorry. Let's, let's hear it. <laughs> um, on the more serious note, what is one worship song or lyric that has really impacted you in your life? Ooh. Wow. I can start. Um, okay. From the Inside Out is a song that's meant a lot to all of us, but it's the first line is, a thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. And that is a line that I've needed about a thousand times. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it lines up for me. Um, but it's a constant reminder that God's grace is always sufficient for that's us, good. and so I need that. You, you matched the song, a thousand times you have failed. Yeah, yeah, I've got Congrats. there. So. Maybe it's irrelevant for me at this point moving forward, but I don't think so. <laughs> oh, what a thousand you? times, a thousand times. Uh, we did, well, this could segue into talking about what we were just up to, but even now, hmm. by foolish things, yes. whoa, band member uh, is a cousin of Chris, yeah. our friend Chris here at Red Rocks, and the line in that song, "He hasn't left you out to dry even now." Yeah. That song, especially early in my faith, when I had a lot of reason to think that God was through with me, that song was spoke a lot. Yeah, man. come on, man. Yeah, I'm gonna do another throwback as well. Hillsong United from back in like 2008, mm -hmm. where the love lasts forever. Yeah. Yep, it's Joel Houston, and it's all it's just about heaven. Yeah, that's cool. where the love lasts forever. Lasts forever. Mm -hmm. That's a good line. It's so good. Oof. I'll probably listen to that after this. Sure. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Thank you, Kayla. Welcome. Great to have you back. Welcome back, Caleb. So glad to be back. Good to have you. <laughs> so we were listening to that song this past weekend. Mm -hmm. This past weekend was great. Yeah. Uh, significant for a couple of reasons. It was the first time in about five years of having this church that all three of us were gone on a weekend at the same time. Yes. And it was also the biggest weekend our church has had Let's outside of an go. Easter Sunday. <laughs> Dude, that's so good. Which was Gosh, awesome. I love yeah. that. I think some people might be like, oh, does that make you like insecure? Or <sighs> no. I was like, no, that's the most the freeing opposite. feeling. That's awesome. Because you, because yep. we always say, like, this isn't about us. It's not about a specific Never. leader or person. And then yep. you see how true that really is. Let's yes. go on another trip this weekend. So we're, Done. we Deal. retired. We're re Deal. This is our retirement announcement today. Just going to do afterthoughts from now on. Yeah. Yep. Just, we're just podcasters. I'm just going to head to the bottom casters. of the ocean. Doug's going to go to outer space to the moon. Yes. Um, and Ethan's going to P. Terry's. <laughs> P. Terry's, yeah. Yeah. On the Amazing Race. Uh -huh. Pissed up. But that. That was really cool. That was for special. our church. Very and cool. James was here, who I was on the phone with earlier, and uh, <laughs> he's awesome. His message was very cool. I feel so like the good. context of that, in light of the weekend we were having. So, what we were doing this weekend, mm. we try every year to have a reunion with our college Bible study guys. Yeah, and we'll tell a little bit about that group and why it ties to the message and stuff. But this was our weekend this year where we were in Colorado, got to go to the Buffs game together, back in Boulder, which where this all began for us. Yep. And then we went up to the mountains and had time to talk life and check in. James' message while we were up there, reliving those days of our lives, talking about songs, listening to songs like that, yeah. uh, was about leaving the 99 for the one. It was about killing comfort and going after people. And that was our group. That was the story of our journey. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about what that group has meant and in the context of James' message fit perfectly of being lost sheep and then hearing the call to become yeah. shepherds to Good. go reach people. Yeah. Good. Well, it's all the way back to 2008, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, mm -hmm. almost exactly 15 years ago is That's when wild. the group started. And all of us um, in college at CU 
and all of us, the three of us pretty lost and searching for purpose and meaning. Hmm. And there's a college ministry right off campus in Boulder called the Annex on Tuesday nights. And we all ended up there in different ways, but two older guys by the names of Sam and Brandon um, answered a call to start a small group of younger guys. And somehow all three of us ended up in it. And I remember they invited you to lunch. Mm -hmm. And that was the first, you were like, okay. My first Christian friend date. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I've not done that. You didn't know what that was at the time. What are we doing? I got introduced to those two guys because I had signed up to go on a mission trip without really knowing if I believed in God, knowing nobody Mm -hmm. going on the trip. I just showed up to that service because I felt like I needed to go seek out, like God's trying to say something to me maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And that trip got announced. So I signed up and a few weeks later got introduced to those two guys and they were so nice, which caught me off guard. I was like, you don't know me. And cool. Yeah. Cool guys. Yes. And they were like, hey, could we take you to lunch this week? And I did not know why they would want to do that. Mm-hmm. But I was like, sure, I'm, I'll go. Mm-hmm. And immediately could tell these guys cared about me, mm-hmm. yeah. cared about my life, wanted yeah. to get to know me. And it seemed like maybe they were going to help answer my question that I had at the time of like, who is God and what is he trying to say to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that led to them inviting me into the group. And I had run into you, who we went to high school together, met you. Yeah. And you guys, they somehow invited you guys separately. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing for me is when Brandon invited me, I had no idea what a small group was. <laughs> yeah. It's was like, what, what, what are you talking about? What, yeah. what is this? What are we going to do? And honestly, I felt, I was nervous. Like I felt really uncomfortable. I felt very comfortable around you two because we all shared similar party values. Core values. Um, but hanging out with them, um, like I remember being really anxious that that first time over and, and a bit about like where I was at at the time, I've always been the one asking questions and investigating mm-hmm. and was trying to figure out if I was agnostic or if I was a Christian or if I was atheist. And I always say it's, you know, you're searching when you're agnostic about being agnostic. Like I didn't <laughs> even know if I, if I could get to that point. Yeah. Um, and what was beautiful about it for me is that was like welcomed. Right. And there was, I, we found that there was like space for my questions and I, I wasn't judged for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a, a posture that I've always tried to, to carry ever since. But yeah, I, I remember being, being nervous and I was so thankful that you guys picked me up from my dorm. Cause I was like, all right, I, I can just hang with Doug and E through, through this time. Yeah. Um, and honestly, the three of us walked into that first day meeting with no idea what to expect and certainly didn't expect it to change our lives and transform our lives like it did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, on that drive, we made a pact with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and we said, no matter what these Christian guys say, we're never going to stop partying. We need to be in this together. And we shook hands on it and made a pact. And Dude, said, that, okay. like, it was so important to us. Yeah. <laughs> it was so important. Yeah, that wasn't a joke. It no, was, like, it was already to, tough enough because they most... wanted to meet on Thursday nights. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. man, that's a big night. That's a big it night. Truly was I like, need to be the pre-gaming. Third biggest night. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> it was truly like, E, are you okay? He's like, oh, can I talk to you guys, man? I'm just, I'm really nervous about this group. <laughs> oh, are you nervous about the like vulnerability and yeah. you know meeting new friends? Like, no, no, like, guys, we have to promise each other this group will not make us stop partying. <laughs> I, I need, know what I they're going to try to do. Promise me. I know what they'll try to do. <laughs> they're not taking that from us. Um, but <laughs> truly, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, outside of my salvation, like yeah. my wife, and my kids, obviously, like this is one of the greatest gifts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This group is one of the greatest gifts God has given me, and. Um, yeah, to the point where still annually we make the effort. All of us live in different states, but we make mm-hmm. the effort to fly to, you know, the same spot and spend three days with each other. Yeah. Having fun, making good meals. Yeah. Um, but then each of us like checking in mm-hmm. and each of us spending about 90 minutes mm-hmm. yeah. checking in yeah. and opening up. And like since the last reunion, here's what's been going on in my life over the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Here's how... Here's what God's been up to. Here's what's been really hard. Mm-hmm. Here's some tears that I'm gonna cry. Mm-hmm. Here's some stories I want to tell you. Here's some cool updates. Um, and it's really, it's like healing to get mm-hmm. that sort of, um, to get the mic mm-hmm. for like 90 minutes with your best friends, yeah. wanting to hear everything. Yeah. Um, 
And and by yeah. the way, if that's if that feels like a foreign concept to somebody listening, like ninety minutes, what do you what do you talk about for ninety minutes? The idea is like that classic picture of an iceberg in every elementary school, yeah. where you can see the top of the iceberg, but that's only ten percent of it, and the ninety percent is underwater. The idea is the same thing happens to us as we go throughout our year. So many things happen and so many conversations and so many amazing things and beautiful things and scary things and hard things that we really are conscious of like 10% of it. And then we just push the rest of it down yeah. beneath the water. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to accomplish in those 90 minutes is give someone a safe space where they can just speak it out mm -hmm. and talk it out. And some of it's silly, uh, but then a lot of it's serious. Mm -hmm. And um, talking about like mine was yesterday and I talked about fears that I haven't talked about with anybody. Mm -hmm. And um, there's something so powerful about just saying it out loud to a group of people that you trust. It's like shining a light in a dark room. I just mix metaphors. It's like bringing the you iceberg up it's out fine. of water. Um, that's that's a fine thing to do on this podcast. Yeah, you plus can. I get to explore the ocean so I can see you know, all the icebergs. The iceberg. mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. And what happens is uh, you don't realize how much stuff you carry around and how much baggage you carry around um, until you say it out loud, mm -hmm. shine a light on it, and then all of a sudden you feel like 10 pounds lighter yeah. as you go. And it's it's just a beautiful process. Yeah, it was cool thinking about those two guys, Sam and Brandon, who started our group. They We were laughing. You know, I was like, man, when I met you guys, I thought you knew everything. Like, I thought you were experts, and we were all laughing because mm -hmm. they were couple years older and certainly knew a lot more than I did, but they had just had a transformative experience in their life where they kind of like in light of James message, they'd gotten comfortable yeah. in their college experience and kind of growing in their faith and had their group and got a call from our college pastor, Bill of like, Hey, you're leaders. And it's time that this faith lives on in somebody else. Time for you to go outside of your comfort zone on a like retreat weekend they'd had, they came down the mountain from that thinking like, who is God gonna put on our you know, radar wow. to start a group? And we happen to be some of those guys that were in critical moments of our life. That's changed everything. And while we're back with those guys 15 years later, mm -hmm. thanking them for taking a leap of faith, I was thinking about James being here preaching a very similar call mm -hmm. to people in our church and thinking 15 years from now, who in our church that right now is at that critical point is gonna be like, hey, you were the person that reached out to me or you heard that message and left the comfort to go find a lost sheep. Cause man, wow. that was their mentality was like, we're gonna go find some lost guys mm -hmm. in Boulder. We were those lost sheep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it felt like somebody came to look for us, it was kind of disarming and strange. Like, let's go to lunch together. I wanna know more about your life than just like how much you can drink. Um, and I, I, I hadn't felt that kind of a love from a, like a friend standpoint before. I have great friends who like I grew up with, but it was like on a spiritual level, I guess, for those guys to come looking for us, guys they didn't even know, mm -hmm. was so life-changing for us. And so I was really excited to think of the people that are gonna do that and step out of comfort in our community yeah. and hopefully beyond to go find somebody whose life will be changed like ours That's was. That's great. Yeah, and you never know, maybe that, uh, you know, that moment for Brandon and Sam on that hike when they got challenged, maybe something as simple as this podcast will be that for a few people watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you know more than you probably think you know. Yeah. And even where you don't know, um, honestly, all you have to do is stay like one week ahead <laughs> of everybody else in your group. Totally. And it's, it's so cool. I've, I've experienced this because that year was invited into a group. And then the year after that, with one of the other guys in our group, Chris, me and him decided to lead Mm -hmm. a small group yeah, of right. freshman guys. Right. And then the year after that, me and you led mm -hmm. a group of different freshman guys that yeah. year. And, um, and then the year after that, I interned at that same college ministry. Yeah. And it's, it's cool to, to sort of, here's the same pattern I have felt every single time. I would feel a nudge and a calling mm -hmm. to step out of the boat and step out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and try leading to some degree to try gathering some people together and making it about Jesus, mm -hmm. even though I didn't know much. And I would always feel uncomfortable and I would always feel scared. And every single time God would come through. And I feel like that's, he, he wants those kind of people because then we rely on him yeah. to do what we can't do. And nothing will grow you. I mean, being in a group grows you, but it's when you step out and you start to go, 
maybe I can do what Sam did or yeah. Brandon did. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could lead something. Maybe I could facilitate this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, uh, you depend on God in a whole new way mm -hmm. and it grows you like crazy. Wow. So that's been a common theme from that yeah. small group to leading one the next year, all the way up to our jobs now, mm -hmm. yeah. building and leading a church. Yeah. Yeah. I have always felt unqualified yeah. and I have always felt out of my comfort zone and a little bit nervous. Totally. And I think that's exactly how God wants it. Yeah. And stepping out of our comfort zones, like if we made a list of all the things we've gotten to experience together in 15 years mm -hmm. with people who were strangers that became brothers very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, to quote Blink-182, mm -hmm. um, that I, I, would have, I wouldn't have believed it if someone would have come in the room that first night we met and said, hey, 15 years from now, you're going to be sitting in the mountains in Colorado and you'll have all these stories to tell, as well as all the tough things that we've gone through, but together yeah. and having yeah. these people. I think that um, the mentality shift that you're talking about that went from like, I'm in this group, I want to lead. Mm -hmm. What happens when you're a lost sheep that somebody comes and finds mm -hmm. is you start to realize that there's a whole lot of lost sheep out right. there and you don't see people as right. competition or insignificant anymore because yeah. right. you know what it felt like yeah. when you thought nobody was looking for you, right. nobody saw you. Right. And that led us, I think, in that whole group to start to see people differently and want to go get those freshman guys that you knew, man, I know exactly what it's like to be you. And all you need is somebody in your corner yeah. to come find you yeah. and yep. care. That's yep. so good, man. And to James's point, uh, I think that good community will always be pushing people out of their comfort zone. Mm. So, so how do you know you, you found some, some good friends, some good people to be in your corner? Uh, it's when they don't just let you stay where you're at, but they, they yeah. push you to take the next step. I, I think, I think it was seven years ago. Um, so like year eight of this group being together that we left our core group weekend and we had gotten challenged that time. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, you guys have always talked about planning a church. Like you, you want to go reach these lost people. Yeah. Um, what if you took that to an entirely new city? And um, that was about seven, I think it was seven years ago. Yeah. And yeah, as was. we were driving down the mountains from that core group reunion, that's when the whole story happened where we started talking about, hey, we love Red Rocks. What if we mm -hmm. uh, just called Sean, you know, and, and told him we, we would do this exactly how you do this. What do you think? And as the story goes, he texted Doug while we were having that conversation and the opportunity, the, the window opened for us to plant a Red Rocks church. But it's just fun to think like those steps right between in the last 15 years, we've taken a lot of steps, but they've, mm -hmm. they've always just been like, do the next right thing do the next right thing, yeah. do the next right thing. And I think good community pushes you out of your comfort zone to, yeah, to do, to take the next step. And yeah. then you look back and you're like, look how far we came. Yeah. Those guys saw something in every single one of us that we couldn't see in ourselves. Um, gifts, leadership, potential of what God could use our lives for. And none of us believed any of that at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have people who see that in you and call it out of you, then you become a group that will never let the other guys settle for less Good. than what God yeah. has for yeah. your life. Yeah. And I think so many of the awesome things we've gotten to be a part of were because it was just always having people pushing yeah. you yes. out of your comfort and yep. saying, no, there's more in you. God's got yep. more for you. Uh -huh. Which happened, um, that was a theme for this past weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Going around and everybody checking in. One theme for us, just to let you in a little bit, was uh, good can so often be the enemy of great. Yeah. And so comfort can just kind of be good. Yeah. And comfort keeps you like, hey, it's not, it's not terrible. It's not bad. No, I'm, I don't feel alive. I don't feel passion. I'm not yeah. necessarily walking in my purpose. I know God has more for me, but I'm kind of just good. Mm -hmm. That that can sometimes be the greatest enemy, totally. the worst enemy of great, yeah. which is when you need um, friends who are not going to let you settle, yeah. just like you said, right. and are going to push you. And I felt a lot of um, faith in me be reinvigorated. Yeah. And I always do whenever we have these reunions, I kind of mm -hmm. get reminded of that sort of initial passion for the yeah. great commission yeah. that we felt um, for the first time ever, all those yeah. years ago, 15 years ago, back in Boulder, where we were reading the Bible for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And we were in this group on Thursday nights for the very first time yeah. talking about the callings that Jesus had on all of our lives. Yeah. And let's risk everything for it. And let's forsake any, any, anything else yeah. in order to pursue this mm -hmm. and be in this together. And every time we meet and I feel it in my heart now, mm -hmm. I feel like a reinvigoration of like, who cares? Life is short. Let's Jesus go. is coming back any day. 
and uh, we got nothing to lose. So let's let's reach more people for yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. Um, I asked this question while we were up there, and I'll have you guys talk a little bit about it here. Okay. In light of thinking of some people who maybe are in a similar boat to where we were when we walked into that small group with a lot of questions, a lot of, you know, being unsure of who God is or how he feels about me. What would you say 15 years later to that version of yourself when you walked into that room and talking about that kind of a fire that we had? What do you think that that kid in college would say to us now that we that we need to remember? Or yeah. maybe yep. we knew better back then that we've lost at this stage 15 years later, being old. Now. For the, the first question, I would say um, there's room for your questions to, to me 15 years ago. Um, like, what did you think you're going to have this whole thing figured out as a finite human being? Of course not. There's room for your questions. And at the same time, and this is important, don't let your questions become an excuse for comfort. Mm. Uh, don't sit back and go, well, you know, I just, I don't know, I got so many questions and yeah. so I'll probably never be able to figure it out. So I'm not going to move forward. It's like, mm -hmm. there's room for your questions, but ask them and pursue them. Jesus says, uh, seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you. Ask and it will be given to you. So mm -hmm. be proactive in your questions. Mm -hmm. That's good. To that first, the first question I would say, you can trust God mm -hmm. because I've always been mm -hmm. a guy who, you know, controls always been a thing for me. Cause I've always been like, Oh, I want, there's so much vision and dreams I have for my life. And I want to, maximize every day that I have on this planet. And I've always had plans. I've always been a planner and a doer and a, a, a dreamer, but then let's go achieve it. And I want, I see this for my future. I see this for my family. I see this for my friend group. I see this for the city I live in and the passion I feel every day for my job and the opportunities I get. And um, I would tell my younger self, trust that God wants those things for you even more than you want those things for you. Wow. And he might rewrite it a little bit or a lot of bit, um, but you will be so glad that he did. And so if you can keep that same kind of zeal wow. and passion, um, but just do it with open hands and not try to control all the details, wow. um, you will write a better story with God than mm -hmm. you ever could have on your own. And I think what that younger Doug would say to me now is, um, Man, when you start to, when you got nothing to lose, you live like you got nothing to lose. Right. So it's just right. you. Uh -huh. And so we were, we were the biggest risk takers ever. Like I'll surrender anything. But then all of a sudden you, you have more responsibility and that's actually a good thing mm -hmm. where, okay, I got a family now. I have a, a wife and now I have kids and now, mm -hmm. um, you know, our church in Austin has grown quite a bit. And so naturally what happens is you start to, played a little bit more safe and be mm -hmm. less risky. Yeah. And it, you call it responsible. Yeah. And I think there is wisdom to stewarding what you've been given, absolutely. But mm -hmm. I think risk is the most responsible thing you can do when you understand who our God is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think 15 years ago, if that Doug were sitting here talking to me right now, I think he would give me another fire up pep talk of, mm -hmm. okay, now what risks are, are in front of you? for you, for your family, and for the church you're leading. Um, how do you take what you now have and go reach more people yeah. and let God write an a, a even crazier story than what he's written so far? Hmm. That's it. That's good. Mm -hmm. do, you um, have, do you have answers to that? Yeah, I think I would, I would say to myself 15 years ago, don't downplay the image bearer of God that you are. Mm -hmm. I think that I, for a lot of my Christian walk, have always felt like I'm made in like, maybe the lesser side of the image of God. Like there's <laughs> like, you don't quite have the gleaming image. You've got yeah, some yeah, yeah. of it, but it's in less important ways. Um, it's the Kroger brand version. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've got just a, enough because he technically had to create you in his image in some way. But I think because of my own shame and yeah. decisions and things, not only did I believe that less about myself, but I kept staying in the same places for too long mm -hmm. because I just downplayed that. And it was more comfortable for me to kind of be the renegade degenerate college yeah. guy than to yeah. actually live the good that was within me yeah. and see that God had put himself yeah. in me when he made me. And, um, I think I would have fast tracked myself a little more in yeah. some healthy ways if I had just truly stood on that identity and not questioned it and not felt like, 
You know, I even think that I downplayed my faith to other people a lot of the time, not because I was embarrassed of God, but because I thought he was embarrassed of me. Right. And so he wouldn't probably want me to be the one sharing the gospel because people would get a skewed version if they looked at my life and be like, but you don't actually get this. And so maybe that's a good way of saying it. God's not embarrassed of you. Yeah. You know, and your flaws. And I think that that, uh, when that started to click, I think what I would remind myself now is the world, like the world is here to be changed by the gospel. Yeah. And I believe that with everything in me. Yeah. And then you get discouraged over time because life is hard and people are tough and you put your effort into certain things that don't work. But man, when the gospel was clicking and it was so simple for us, it was like, oh, we'll go change the world with this. Yeah. Because we've we've read stories of guys who were just as imperfect as us who yeah, did this. That's yeah. so good. And that's actually true. And that's here for the the church to go live out. Absolutely. And, and not only is he not embarrassed of you, but he's actually like proud of you. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's that's even better news. Right. Than just not being embarrassed, but yeah, you know, looking at you and going, even if you don't do anything. Yeah. Um for my kingdom as far as building it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm proud of you just because you're my kid, you're my son, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and you so, preach all the time, like that's why everything you've gotten to do is, is house money yeah. Yeah. from that Good. point on. Like yep. you're not building the church for God's love yeah. right. or approval of you, yeah. for him to say, I'm proud of you. But from that, it's right. like, well, everything I got, like everything's house money now. Yeah. What, is it, what does the rest matter? Yeah, you not know, that we know anything word. about house money. <laughs> <laughs> blackjack or anything like that but of course not of course yeah there was i think sometimes when talking about like a group like ours where we've had so many amazing adventures together and these deep bonds and friendships it can feel maybe to other people like yeah but you guys struck gold like it was the right place at the right time and you're all the same person but we laugh about how different we all are and even more so how different we all were when we first walked into that room Mm -hmm. um i i remember an older guy talking to a group of guys about his group and he'd been meeting with them for decades. Mm-hmm. These guys met early in their faith and they just, you know, had yeah. li- lived their lives together. Mm-hmm. And one of the other guys in the group had that kind of a mentality of like, yeah, well, you got lucky cause you got the right guys at the right time. Like I'm busy. How could you possibly actually, could anybody else really have that? Right. And Scott, the guy who was telling his story, he just looked at him and he goes, um, to the question, how do you actually do that? How do you have that group? He just goes, oh, you just do it. You just do it. <laughs> you just do it. Yeah. You just put the effort in, you That's keep showing it. back up. And mm-hmm. that is easier now. I mean, it's harder in the sense that we all live in different places and we have to put effort into yeah. getting in the same room, but it's easier to walk into the room together and feel comfortable and excited because we've done this for 15 years. Early on, oh man, it wasn't like, oh man, I, I'm just like all these other guys and we agree on everything and we all get along really well. No. We just kept showing up. Yeah. And so that might be just a word for somebody who feels discouraged That's in so community good, that you just do it. You just have to keep going after it. And you have to show up there, not just, is everybody else here going to make me feel what I want and Dude. you know give me what I want out of this, but I'm going to go here to create that group. Yeah. I'm going to be a part of making this into something That's so good, wonderful. bro. And we have, to, we have to get to a point where we don't need everybody to agree with everything that we think in order to be in the same room as them. Yeah. Like there has to be space for opinions and there has to yeah. be space for mm-hmm. conversation and healthy uh-huh. dialogue. We were talking about this late late last night that it seems to be getting harder and harder to have like conversations with two people who have two different opinions because it's yeah. like the, the volume on it is just cranked up from two to 10 and now everybody wants to just pick a side and throw stones and, and whatever and it's like, hey, you're not going to agree with everybody in your group about everything and yeah. that's actually the beauty of it. Look at the team that Jesus assembled. There was a tax collector who worked for Rome and there was a zealot who was passionately against what Rome was doing. And Jesus goes, okay, you two, you're going to be with me. Yeah. You know, like, Mm -hmm. like Jesus was a, a master at creating space for people to have conversations. And then you start to realize that underneath all the opinions, we're all human beings made in the image of God. And so let's start there. Mm. That's really good. good. I love that. And one more thought about what you said about the guy who, he was a very busy man Mm -hmm. Uh who had a lot on his schedule, but said, oh, you just do it. Yep. Um, I never thought of being busy as it can, you can kind of turn into a little bit of a victim mindset with your busyness yeah. of I'm, yeah. a, I'm sort of a victim to how much I have going on and what I have to do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm powerless. I can't do that. I know I need to, but I can't, I'm so busy. Yeah. Cause when you say like, when you say that you're implying 
victim because what victim means is I am absolutely powerless to do anything about this situation. Yeah. I'm overloaded with too much stuff to do mm -hmm. that I don't have time to to create something great that I know I need. Yeah. And you need to shift that mindset and go, no, 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 I'm not powerless. I, mm -hmm. I have power over my schedule and nobody else is gonna do this for you. Right. You need something right. like this. You need that sort of community. Mm -hmm. um, you need to go cultivate it. You need to, maybe you're the one who, you know, you, you start, you're the one who creates this. Good. Right. And you get to invite other people into it. But uh, nobody else is going to do this for you. Yeah. Right. And so just yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no group of people that has challenged me and disagreed with me more than the guys in that room. Yeah. Right. And we're the, they're the closest friends I have in my life, mm -hmm. including you guys. You're also some of my, wow, thanks, not man. just uh, your coworkers. colleagues and coworkers, but <laughs> I do consider you guys friends. You mean that? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Clip um, it. Clip it. But yeah. we, I mean, through 15 years, I've been called out. I've been challenged. I've been disagreed with so <laughs> yeah. many times oh, by yeah. the guys, you know, in that room. And yeah. I'm better for it. <laughs> We've had but those we, moments. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We still do. Yeah. But if you keep coming back to the table, because you remember, yeah. hey, deep down, we love each other mm -hmm. and we want what's best for each other. We're also humans. That's where you really grow in that tension and in those conversations. And sometimes you need that because you're letting yourself settle. Mm -hmm. You're letting yourself get comfortable, and you need one of the, those other guys to go. Hey, I know who you. I know who you are. I've known you for this whole yeah. journey. Yeah. And I'm going to call you out of that. Um, or you need to be humbled, or whatever it is. And there's people who care enough about you to step into that space with you. Yeah. And if you're willing to keep living, what is what were you saying about tension? Living in. You said it recently on this, I think, about, I'd rather live in... Oh, I, I'd rather live in um, honest tension than dishonest harmony. Yeah. Yeah, right. We've, we <sighs> learned to live in honest tension with that group. Yeah. Yes. And it's been a really big gift. Yes, versus absolutely. Versus superficial surface level yeah. friendship. Man. Yeah, because you think about, um, you think about, it's one of the stories in the Old Testament where Moses sends a bunch of spies into the promised land to scout it out yeah. and report back. And I think he sends 12 mm -hmm. and two of them, Joshua and Caleb, mm -hmm. are the only ones who come back and go, we can do this. And the other 10 say, no, we can't. And mm -hmm. so the other 10 um, listen to fear mm -hmm. and settle for what's comfortable. Yeah. And two of them say, no, let's, let's step out because yeah. there's great. There's great yeah. if we fight for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there's 12 and 10 of them up for good and comfy and two of them up for great yeah. and, and uncomfortable. Yeah. And I actually don't think that that's an exaggerated statistic. No. I think that's probably... It's about right. I think two out of 12, at the end of the day, are wow. the amount of people who say, I'm gonna go for it, and, wow. and I'm not just gonna be okay with surviving and good and comfy today. Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna do whatever I have to do to go after the, the calling that I feel like God has for me, yeah. mm -hmm. the me I know I could be, mm -hmm. I'm gonna chase it down. I feel like it's about two out of 12 who actually do that. Probably. And I think one of the biggest things, one of the biggest indicators on if you'll be one of those two and not one of the 10, is if you have a group like that who can push you to do it. Wow. Yeah, the difference wow. probably for those two guys is they at least had each other. Exactly. So there was one other that's, guy that he, they kind of had the same look in their eye, yep. like, we mm -hmm. can do this. Mm -hmm. that I, I've always loved that story because scripture describes them as having a different spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And when I look at the world right now, it's a world that needs people of God with a different That's spirit. That's so good, yeah. man. That say, no, what God has for us is actually possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Because as Christians, I feel like there's two words we're really obsessed with, calling and comfort. Yeah. And we actually want both of them at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And we think, well, if it's God's calling on my life, I should feel comfortable in it. Yeah. When in reality, no, 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 it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to sort of trade off that comfort yeah. and learn to be comfortable in the discomfort yeah. mm -hmm. in order to walk in the calling that That's God so good, has man. on your life. I, I said this before, um, but we, we Christians, especially in the West, where comfort is such a high priority, yeah. we associate Christ with comfort and the devil with disruption. Mm -hmm. And when in reality, it's probably the devil who really works hard at keeping all oh, of yeah. us comfy. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. it's Christ who's trying to interrupt mm -hmm. and disrupt. That's so good. And man. get you off of your, you know, metaphorical couch mm -hmm. and off of that comfort and what's known to get you to walk out the door and go pursue it and, and say, <sighs> bring on the waves and whatever's in front of yeah. me, like God's going with me. Because God, that's one of the things he said to the Israelites I will go before you 
but I won't go for you. Mm -hmm. You need to have that gritty spirit that says, yeah. I'll go. And then God's like, okay, I'm in. Yeah. So, so grit to me says uh, practical steps, right? I think this is why uh, calling today is such like an ethereal word mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a 30,000 foot word where it's just vague and ominous yeah because yeah. as long an idea. as as long as you can keep your calling like super in the clouds then you don't have to actually take a step today yeah and that's where you stay comfortable so the practical tangible step for somebody listen to listening to this is hey let's put an action step today to this thing that you feel called to do mm -hmm. because that action step is not going to be comfortable and then tomorrow let's do let's do it again yeah. and let's do it again and let's do it again and let's yeah. start like actually putting some motion to this thing that we're called called to do it's good that is really good that's really good yeah whether that's like um i mean whether that's maybe for somebody it's like pursuing your wife again mm. you know the idea of a thriving marriage is a, nice. is a great idea and it's a lot easier when you keep it as just this idea of something yeah. that you want. Yeah. But what does it look like to actually have that heart to heart conversation tonight and you initiate it yeah. or to plan those date nights? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It takes grit to do that to, you know, you've been dreaming about starting this company mm. because you're at a job and you feel passionless in it. Mm. So what does it look like to keep working at that job? And then you come home and after you put the kids down to bed from eight to 10, that's your time to go hard with like, no, I'm going to start this passion project and I'm going to start this new company. Yeah. And yeah, it just, it, it's so much, it's kind of like a dog, having a dog. I think everybody loves the idea of having a dog. Mm -hmm. But when you actually get a dog, it's like, okay, this is, this is a lot. I just told these guys, do not get a dog. Don't do it. <laughs> it's the same concept <laughs> with revival. Mm -hmm. We yeah, always good. sing songs about like, and I, I, I actually think that song was prophetic and Hosanna is one of my favorite songs, but yeah. I see a near revival. Yeah. And I think for Christians, it's always a revival to come yeah. God's about to do something. Because yeah. as long as he's about to do something, it's still an idea and we have something to look forward to right. without actually having to do something today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we treat on an individual level our callings the same way. Totally God's right. about to do something in my life. I'm getting ready yeah. and we can be obsessed with like, once I'm completely healed, then I'll help. Once I'm a hundred percent prepped, then yeah. I'll go pursue this purpose. Good you luck know? with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Man, well, I also wrapping up thinking about our group and those two guys that started it. When you recognize first that Jesus came for you as the last sheep and yeah. he used whatever method he did, you know, like my mom will forever remind me always I'm so thankful for Sam and Brandon because yeah. they were the messengers that he sent to come find this lost sheep. When you know that story and then you recognize that he's tapping you on the shoulder, like, yeah. I want you to go find one of those and I want you to bring them and introduce them into who I am. There's no greater call. And that I think no. has been the fun thing to live out with our group of friends of some of us that's been in ministry, but some are in business, mm -hmm. videography, like there's everybody's yeah. in different Yeah you know, lanes of life, but yeah. all always under that banner of, we knew, we know what it was to be the guys who somebody had to come find whatever God has for us. We're going to do that as our way of going to reach somebody that he mm. has for us, somebody right. that's lost out in the field. Right. And that's, uh, it's fun to be a part of. Yeah. Man, let's go. To put context around why I told Kayla not to get a dog. They yeah, what do you hate They dogs? live in an apartment. Oh, they don't course. have a yard. Yeah. And I made that mistake. I said I would wait till I get a house. Well, that was just the advice in the conversation. <laughs> we're, we're pro dogs. We love dogs. Love dogs. Have uh, a dog. Love them. Me I, too. Even have one. Me too. Ryan once said he didn't like dogs. I once said in that and I'll never say it again. <laughs> I'll, you do have a actually, clip of it though. I, I, yeah, it's fine. I think dogs are great. <laughs> Dude, I got, I got so much hate for As that. you should have. And like, yeah. like, it wasn't just like laughter hate. It was like sincere I hate that you said that. <laughs> well, um, so that's, that's, dogs are great. And dog, <laughs> dog spelled backwards-y? We'll let the viewers find out for themselves. <laughs> uh, good luck to James Madison, Jeff Atkinson. Thank you, Jeff Atkinson. Love you, Jeff. James, thanks again, man, for preaching this weekend. Love you, A James. great message. Yep, Randy. Randy. We love you. I'm so glad you're okay, man. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Watch yes. out. Don't never listen to Afterthoughts on never, our own again. No, no, no. If you're listening to it right now, turn it off, Randy. Turn <laughs> this off. Um, okay. Two last things. One, as always, share this with somebody. We have a TikTok YouTube channel. We're always trying to get the word out and share just the story of what God's doing through our lives in this church. 
um, and beyond with other people. And if you're in the Austin area yeah. this week, come to a service yeah. at Red Rocks Austin this weekend because it's baptism weekend. Baptism weekend, yeah. let's and go. I'll invite somebody to the church every weekend because I love our church and I love the community that's here, but especially on a baptism weekend because you yeah. get to hear stories of people's lives that have been changed. Good. You get to watch people publicly proclaim their faith in a time that it's not super popular to do so. Oh, no. It costs people to do so, and yet you see that kind of heart beating faith that yeah. we, you know, have been talking about today. People that want to go build the kingdom of God. So come, I can't experience wait for it. this weekend, man. It's going to be awesome. Oh man! And uh, I guess we'll maybe you guys want to come back do it again next week. I'll be here. Okay. Yeah. I'll All see right. See you then. Peace. <laughs>